discuss about what makes for a good entrepreneurial idea. We will discuss about developing the opportunities for developing good entrepreneurial idea, the creativity methods for improving the creativity, uh, creativity methods, and business idea development process and analysis. And in the end, we will end uh, the presentation with a nice tool about evaluation and selection of best business ideas. So at the beginning, let's discuss about this formula for success. Uh, if you mix up creativity and entrepreneurship, you'll definitely get there. So uh, what's the leitmotiv of this presentation is that creativity can be facilitated and entrepreneurship can be learned. So these are, although in previous, in, uh, uh, um, previous time it was um, thought or meant that uh, entrepreneurship is something that you're born with, either you have it or not, you can become a successful entrepreneur or either you're a creative person or not. Now we uh, would like to uh, change that to the fact that entrepreneurship can be learned. So trainings like this, also formal education will help you uh, develop your entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial um, skills. So the first and most important thing is uh, business ideas versus business opportunities. Many business consultants debate the difference between a good business idea and a good business opportunity. So good uh, ideas are existing, but good opportunities are scalable. That's the key difference between these two elements. So they're implementable plans with a customer base that you can access and build on. So great business opportunities fill in fill an ongoing need. They offer something new or different. And crucially, they allow you to make a profit and grow your business. Uh, the best business ideas comes from the entrepreneur's pers personal experience. It's also very important, um, the personal experience to uh, intersect the passion that entrepreneurs have. Subjects matter, uh, subject matter expertise is a tremendous asset, and in most cases, a crucial part of uh, starting a successful business. Therefore, uh, specific uh, knowledge is, uh, is needed. Um, it is important to have a vision for your company, a strong internal driver of uh, why it is important for you to be successful. So a sense of, um, of purpose will help carry you through the uh, unavoidable periods of trial, doubt, and struggle. So basically, uh, if you, if you uh, look at these important factors, knowledge, experience, passion, and vision, we can uh, conclude that uh, hobbies that we all have are something that join all these together. So when you have a hobby, you're, you're passionate about it. You do it because you like to do it. Like from the poll that uh, Eleni sent, somebody would like to go fishing right now. It's uh, something that you do often, so you have the experience and something that you like, so you spend a lot of time learning trying to learn and finding uh, uh, new answers about it uh, all the time. So uh, let's assess the business opportunity. So the three things here are most important. It relies on your unique selling points to conduct the market research and to speak with potential customers. So it is, very, it is also very important that entrepreneurs uh, to do uh, thorough market search because in-depth market search is an absolute must for new business idea. If there is not enough demand for your product, your business will never take off. Also, understanding the customers before trying to sell them is another success factor. Last but not least, uh, competitors' research helps you understand the market better. The potential of a uh, great business idea relies on a sound set of unique selling points. This differentiates the entrepreneurial idea from the competitor's one and makes your product more desirable. So this is something that you should uh, uh, remember out of this presentation. And the, 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 these are the five signs for great business idea. The first one is it solves a problem, meaning 
solving a problem means delivering a solution that makes people's life easier. But sometimes you have a great idea that solves a good problem, a great problem. But is it scalable? So scalability is the potential of your business opportunity to grow and be applied to an ever-increasing market. The third one is you can sell it at an attractive price and make a good profit. Here I would stress out the term attractive price. So not always low price is a great business idea, but an attractive price, it's really important. So for different market segments, the attractiveness of the price is different. Let's say you sold, you sell a super hyper uh, sports car, then attractive price is in the range of million of euro, right? But the thing is that even on that price, you have to have a business idea that gives you a good profit. So finding the right, prof, uh, right price for the goods or service that you're providing, it's really essential. Because no matter how good the idea or how well it solves the problem, if the price is not right, people will not buy. It. And this price not right, it can go in both directions. If it's too low, sometimes people don't buy it because ah, this is too cheap, it's not a good quality. Or if it's too high, then people don't value it. I don't see the value or the benefit buying culture. And the fourth, you have to have it made in a way that it's not easy to copy. Coming up with something truly unique is difficult enough, but keeping it that way is even harder once other people hear about it. In the end, trust your gut, but not at the expense of your head. This is pretty much self explanatory. One of the keys with any new idea is uh, really to be honest with yourself. Conviction is important, but blind conviction is dangerous. And entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs are usually so passionate about it that uh, when they have a vision, they're blinded by, by it. So they lose, your, they lose their head over it. Next thing is uh, the develop, developing the opportunities. So here the key is entrepreneurship education. According to the World Economic Forum, now more than ever, we need innovation, new solutions, creative approaches, and new ways of operating. We are in a uncharted territory and need people in all sectors and at all ages who can think out of the box to identify and pursue opportunities in new and paradigm changing ways. So entrepreneurship is a process that results in creativity, innovation, and growth. Uh, the entrepreneurship education, on the other hand, it's the vehicle for innovating teaching, energizing culture, developing learning, and strengthening achievement. It's widely accepted that um, experimental learning of learning by doing with practical projects and uh, activities and integrated real world uh, world experiences of entrepreneurship is more effective than the traditional methods such as lectures, develop um, and uh, presentations, or we call it uh, ex cathedra learning. So we have a teacher behind the cathedra um, speaking about something. So learning by doing is applying theoretical knowledge to practical work is more motivational and leads to uh, deep as opposed to surface learning. So. Why, why is this important? On the left-hand side, you have a diagram showing the European Commission's annual innovation scoreboard. So with, since 2018, EU uh, has surpassed United States in this innovation scoreboard. Only by one point, but okay, it, that grows and EU is now ahead of United States. But on the other, on the right-hand side, you have the fact that the Europe produces about 36% of global startups, but only about 14% of those of the world's unicorns. So unicorns are the best startups, the ones that grow a lot and produce a lot and sell on big prices. So in 2019, US has produced, has produced 50 of this and Europe only 14. So here's why we need entrepreneurship education integrated in all levels uh, of our educating system. So that entrepreneurship education uh, 
the European Commission provides a breakdown of the uh, broad dimensions of entrepreneurship education into a framework of attitudes, knowledge, and skills, which has been adopted by uh, all European countries. So what are attitudes? The first one is self-awareness and self-confidence. So those are entrepreneurial attitudes which constitute the basis for all other aspects of entrepreneurship. They entail discovering and trusting uh, in one's own abilities, which uh, then allow individuals to turn um, their creative ideas into action. In many countries, these attitudes might be uh, pursued as general education goal. So the second one is uh, taking the initiative and risk taking. Critical thinking, creativity, and problem solving are also fundamental, but they are also specific attributes of a, a, an enterprising self. The second element is knowledge. The knowledge of career opportunities and the world of work are learning outcomes that are not exclusively related to entrepreneurship, but usually from part of students' general preparation for their future career choices. However, a, a, a sound knowledge of the nature of work and different types of work involve an, um, an understanding of what, what it is to be an entrepreneur. The second part is economic and financial literacy. So we have to teach everybody about this. And um, here I always mention, um, and I recommend you a good book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So in that, he explains that pretty much everybody from the developed world, right? Uh, from uh, uh, developed countries, uh, everybody uses the financial system, uses a credit card, deals with the bank, opens a bank account, gets money in, out, uses a loan, gets a, a loan for a house, a, a lease for a car or, or whatever. But only a small, a small percent of these users have an economic and financial literacy because education does not provide us with that. Only in um, vocational educations, you get that, but other people don't get that education. But in the end, yet they um, uh, get into this uh, business with banks, al although they lack this knowledge. And the knowledge of business organization and processes is the specific knowledge of the environment in which entrepreneurship is often applied. Again, not available to um, everybody that undergoes the formal education system. And uh, last, but maybe most important thing is the skills. So that's the thing that you get out of it in the end. That's communication, presentation, and planning skills, as well as teamwork and transversal skills that are essential for entrepreneurs. Because no one does something alone, right? Everybody has to work in some kind of a team or cooperate with somebody. And the second part is practical exploration of uh, entrepreneurial opportunities that includes the various stages of the business setup process, including designing and implementing a business plan. So this can be useful to help students to see the bigger picture, such as who the stakeholders are, uh, how ideas uh, can develop into viable business, that understand how cash flows in and out of the business. However, an over fixation on a, on a business can also be uh, contraproductive as plans have to change uh, as the situation and knowledge evolves. So we come to the point right now, so the second part of the equation of success, that's the creativity. What is creativity? What's the difference between innovation and creativity? And what's the difference between individual and organizational creativity? So organizations face the challenge of creating value for customers. So if organizations want to succeed in the market, they must create new products or processes that will meet uh, the needs of customers. So hence the need for organizations to act proactively in order to develop creativity as an essential competence. In short, creativity is the most essential of all competences in organizations because creativity is what makes the thing better and newer. Creativity is the best way to create value. Uh, from the video that we've uh, seen at the beginning, I don't know if you if you catch it, but uh, uh, the lady mentioned that organizations, corporations are not as agile and not as lean as startups. Hence, 
they lack creativity because they have business processes, they have standards, they have procedures in place in their in the corporations and in, in big companies that, that are killing the creativity. So that's why startups are much more creative and they can provide this creativity to big organizations. So there are various definitions and explanations. To better understand creativity, it is important to distinguish between creativity and innovation. So creativity is the raw material that later on turns into innovation. Creativity is a necessary step within the innovation process used to present uh, the network of gathering new ideas, approaches. Uh, innovating is the process of transforming create, creative ideas into a, a visible product or, or a process. So it could be defined as the ability to perceive problems and find new solutions. Mainly it depends on three factors. That's knowledge, intellectual ability, and temperament, which is individual for um, everyone, every single one of us. So as a model for creative potential, we have the following five elements. In order to have the creative potential, we have to mix all these four elements on the side. That's personality. Here we have the level of, of confidence, risk taking, the ability to look foolish, uh, the, uh, connected to that if, is fear of judgment and criticism, then skepticism of unknown and emotional blocks. Uh, so that's the personality. So uh, added to the personality is the external organizational environment where we live in. So that's the culture, the blindness, the centralization, the predictability, the traditions and taboos and resistance to change. And on the opposite side, we have intrinsic and uh, uh, extrinsic motivation. So in the intrinsic, we have positive design of wonder and discovery, humor, uh, and curiosity. And on the extrinsic, we have competition, dissatisfaction with the present situation, reward, and good management. So if we mix all this, we get the creative potential. So here we have communication, perception and vision, assumptions, objective knowledge, visualization, flexibility, and association of ideas. So coming to three creative thinking, we'll discuss the mental models of, uh, and ways of thinking. So creative thinking is the process used for generating uh, ideas. It refers to connecting and combining ideas that have not been in a relationship before. New ideas are formed as a result of developing culture, uh, current ideas in the minds of uh, employees. New ideas can be considered in the context of what is already known. And creative thinking can be accidental and deliberate, which is conscious and current. So uh, accidental, we all know a lot of things have been discovered accidentally, right? The phone, the penicillin, I don't know what else. The most, the most known ones. But the creative thinking can be a random process without using specifically designed ideas to, uh, to generate them. And the ideas come by chance when one thinks differently and discovers a, a significant change. But what we would like is to have deliberate creative thinking. So we would like to uh, have a mechanism, a, method a methodology, an environment in which we get creative thinking. So the, the methodology or the result for deliberate creative thinking is this diagram. At first you ideate, then you develop, then you implement, then you clarify, and then you move again in this circle of four elements. That's how the process works. The second most important thing that you should remember out of these presentations presentation is are the methods for increasing creativity. There are 10 tips for increasing creativity. The first one is if you don't try something new, you will don't know what type of results it will give you. Or there is a saying, knowing is better than wondering. If you wonder all day long, all year long, if it's going to be like this or like that, it's not going to help you. It's better to know. Bad ideas today can be good ideas tomorrow. 
We have a lot of examples from the past that show us that even the idea is good, the product is excellent, it is not the right time to launch it to the market. Let's say even Porsche has developed the first electric car, but it took 100 years to pass to have Tesla using the same ideas and now making it a, a good product. Be prepared because ideas can come from everywhere. All day that you see something, you identify a problem that people have and you see you get an idea how to solve that problem. Make your business to be a very uh, creative working place. So nowadays, if you can, I, I, I'm sure you have seen it all over internet, especially ICT companies are, are investing a lot into making the environment of the, uh, of the workplace uh, to be really creative. Unfortunately, COVID has sent everybody home. So now that makes no sense, but it will end and everybody will get back. So we will have uh, it's uh, uh, to have an environment when you can, I don't know, sit on a yoga ball or uh, don't have a dress code. You can come as, as you like. Uh, in the meantime, while you stop working, you can climb the rock or I don't know, play some football or whatever. Uh, the fifth, is it the fifth one, two, three, four, fifth? Yes, the fifth element is use mind maps. This is something that's, uh, you've definitely heard if you've seen Sherlock Holmes movies. So he's using mind maps. Uh, what are mind maps? That's how you structure your thoughts. So that's an uh, uh, um, uh, example of that is how you organize your files and folders on your on your computer. So Windows gives you, let's say, if you use Windows, it gives you uh, my documents, and you, inside you have pictures and downloads and my files or whatever, right? But everybody of us uses uh, an own way how to organize files and folders in order to know where everything is, right? So that's how you should organize your thoughts in your mind in order to be creative. Try to encourage change to routines because routines are really killing the creativity. Use networking to increase creativity in your business. Reward creativity, use brainstorming meetings to encourage innovation and look at problems and different solutions. So coming to business ideas development, the business idea should, should be a balance between the entrepreneur who will implement it and the market with customers and competition that will affect uh, business. So it's a balance between the entrepreneur side and the market side. So, you should understand the business idea elements. That's the problem, the desire, and low competition. So let me explain that through a diagram. So you have the current condition. You have a business idea. So there is a problem, it's a problem that you see. You get a business idea how to solve the problem. Then you analyze the three elements. The problem, then the desire of the customer to buy the problem, to buy the product or service that you offer to solve the problem. So between the current condition and the desire to solve the problem is what you're looking for. And in the end, it is low competition. So if you have all these three, you identify a problem, you have an idea how to solve that problem, you have a desire from the market side from the uh, as I said, we come up with the evaluation and selection of business, best business ideas. So there is a tool for this. It's called Idea Evaluation Matrix. It's something that all of us are doing or using, but maybe you, you don't know how to do it into a structural way in order to present to somebody. So what we do is we, with this tool, we select the ideas to, that we put in the matrix for evaluation. We choose the right ranking criteria. We rate the selected ranking criteria, we score of each business idea, and we calculate each idea's weighted score in order to sum the weighted score and compare. And we have a number that shows us which idea is the best one. So let's say you do this, you go to buy a phone, right? You need to buy a new phone. So you evaluate, I don't know, five models according to three criteria, price, camera, and battery life. So let's say uh, camera is really important for you because you take a lot of pictures. 
So then you give a weighted criteria of that of 50. Uh, price is uh, second most important. So you give a weighted criteria of 30. And vertical life is the least important one. So we give a, crit a weighted criteria of 20. So you weigh, uh, weight all, you, you give um, grades to all five models according to these three criteria. Then you multiply the weighted and you sum it and you get which phone is best for you. That's how you do it usually. So here's an example how to do that for two business. Okay. So um, we have two business ideas here that we, that we would like to evaluate. The power wheel is the product that I've been working on and developing uh, last year. And it's the example that we will use throughout this training in order to uh, uh, better understand what we are talking about. So uh, it's a wheel for a suitcase that produces electricity and I'll explain, I'll explain it later. And the second business idea, let's say it's an agriculture app to develop an app for agriculture for something. I don't know what. So we put three uh, criteria: scalability, competition, and profit. So we weigh them. Scalability is really most important for us, so we give a five. Competition is not so important, so we give one. And profit is in the middle, so we give a three. So we assign grades. So the power wheel has a good scalability. We can sell it all around the world. So it gets a high, highest grade of five. The agricultural app, it's only for people in agriculture, but from those, it's only for the ones that are computer literate and have internet access and have a smartphone. So that's a niche market. So we give a one. Competition. In power wheel, it's somewhere in the middle, we give a three. In agricultural app, everybody that's developing, developing apps, and that's a lot of people nowadays, everybody can do it, so it's high competition, so we give a five. So the profit here is weighted three, and here it's weighted five, because here in the app, you have really low costs, uh, it's fast to develop, you don't have to buy machines to produce it and whatever, so that's why, profit is bigger. So now I multiply the grade with the weighting factor. Five times five, 25. One times five, five. And after that, I sum up from top to bottom about each idea, the weighted grades. And here I have 37, and here I get 25. So this gives me a, a picture of uh, comparing these two uh, business ideas on these three factors that this one is better. So let's. Uh, why is not changing? Okay. So now let's go to the Power Wheel uh, business case. Let me introduce to the Power Wheel business case study or the one that we're going to use uh, during this uh, training. So, where is the problem? The problem that we have seen is in airports trying to reduce carbon, carbon footprint. So what, what they do with that? So that's a trend that's happening. Uh, uh, airports are competing between themselves. Uh, uh, that's a standardized way. There's organization that uh, doing this. So uh, in order to uh, lower the carbon footprint or the CO2 emissions, they have to uh, uh, use be energy efficient use efficient lighting uh don't use cars that emit co2 so no diesel engines move to electric cars and so on and so on but when you get to level two to three and then so then all the small elements are really important so what they do is they eliminate the power outlets that are publicly available at the airport that means that when you're at the airport, you, you have nowhere where to charge your phone. There is a second uh, reason for doing that, and that's security. Because if there is a publicly av available power outlet, somebody might go there, use a small tool and do something and make a bomb or whatever and make a, uh, a problem with it. So that's why airports are eliminating publicly, uh, publicly available power outlets. That means when you're at the airport, you don't have a way how to charge your phone. 
On the other hand, an average passenger is traveling to a destination with one connection flight walks around six kilometers. So let's say you right now need to travel to Malmö, you go to Thessaloniki airport, you get a connection flight that goes to Vienna, and then from Vienna you go to Malmö. On all this, you will walk around six kilometers uh, approximately, maybe even more. So where is the idea? The idea is to produce electricity from the rolling motion of the wheel or a set of wheels. So in these six kilometers, if you carry a luggage that rolls all day long behind you, why don't use that and produce electricity out of it? Why? In order to, to charge a device. Because nowadays, everything around you needs uh, battery life, needs electricity, either it's a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, uh, a smartwatch, an ear, uh, earbuds, whatever, you need some power to charge them. And the idea is to have a smart design that can be adopted to various needs. We start with suitcases, but the idea is to have it scalable, right? So we can do that to, uh, we can implement the same uh, principle into uh, baby strollers. So when you walk your baby you or you jog with your stroller, you roll the stroller, you can produce electricity out of it or hospital beds or shopping carts in the mall or pretty much everything with a wheel. What's the challenge? The, what are the challenges? The first one is efficiency. So what's the distance needed to travel to charge a device? If you, in those six kilometers that you walk around the airport, if you charge your device with 2% of the battery, then this is not a good product. The second challenge is the trade-off between size, weight, materials, and regulation. If you increase the size, you increase the weight. If you, increase, if you use light materials, then uh, you, uh, you have a, a bigger uh, cost and it, it will cost a lot. The product will cost a lot. And in the end, also, we have a lot of regulations for this product, because if you want to put it in an aircraft, then you have to follow the regulation. And the third challenge is the intellectual property rights, how to protect this uh, in order for the competition not to copy. The second part is the market research, right? You have to do an in-depth market research. So we were really surprised that our market research showed that there is only a single company in the world that does this. It's a company called Prologo. It comes from Hong Kong, and they're producing a suitcase with a set of four wheels that has a mechanical element inside with a set of gears that transfers that uh, uh, uses this rolling motion of the wheels into this generator to produce electricity. So what are the, uh, the drawbacks of this? The efficiency is very low because you have a lot of losses and you have a lot of friction, the temperature, and the, you have a lot, uh, you have a nasty sound out of it uh, because it revolutes, uh, the generator revolutes at 12,000 RPM. So we started the process of the design. When you like to produce electricity out of rolling motion, the only way is induction. If you want to get uh, electricity with induction, you have to have a rotor and a stutter, uh, uh, copper coil, and some and mag permanent magnet rotate. So we started with this design. Uh, with the process of uh, EDA develop, uh, learn, right? We've learned that this design is not good because the efficiency is very low and the weight is too, too high. So then we started looking at old uh, hard disk drives. So that this is how they look. I'm not sure if some of you has opened an old hard disk drive. There are two magnet plates on both sides and inside and in the middle, you have these coils that are uh, in this polar uh, uh, array shape. So we've tried to use that design We've increased the efficiency, but again, we were not satisfied. And in the end, we came up with this one. So we have the rubber, the rubber wheel on the outside. Inside, we have outer slow rotating holes, which are connected to each other with different polarization. The reds one are uh, south, blue ones are north. After that, we have a non-magnetic metal cage inside the metal cage we have steel segments in order to break out the magnetic flux 
Then inside we have the inner fast rotating poles and the uh, stutter uh, wiring. And we have a housing that looks really nice, shiny, ready to uh, put everything inside. So what are your uh, what are our unique selling points? Here's a video uh, show an animation showing the product. A set of four wheels on a suitcase will charge an external battery of 10 thousand milliampere hours. So we have an external battery that's somewhere inside your suitcase. That's why this is shown like this because the wheel is at the bottom, the power, the power bank is at the top because you have to remove it according to regulations during flight and put it in your pocket. So it's not uh, in use. We'll have electronics inside for fast charging. So this rolling motion will slowly charge the power bank but the power bank will fast charge your device. It's according to FAA regulations. It's shock resistant, water resistant, and dust resistant because you'll move around with your suitcase. Sometimes you'll splash it in, a, uh, uh, in some water or you'll have dust or whatever. So it's uh, resistant to all these factors. That's the end of my presentation for today. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>